welcome everyone to a very, very special edition of Off, of Off Market. It is our final episode of the year and we are joined by an incredible live audience. If we can just take a look around. Give yourselves a round of applause. We need a thing go, yeah, applause. A clap <laughs> sign, a clap <laughs> sign. We are joined by some of Perth's very best agents in the house today um, and some of our very best clients. So we just uh, wanted to take this opportunity before we really kick the show off to thank you guys. It has been a crazy year. I think we can all attest to that. Um, we're finishing on a bit of a high, which we will chat about, but we just want to thank you guys for all of your support and loyalty through the year. Um, it's been really, really incredible. So it's a nice little yeah. way to start the show. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, obviously joined by the Golden Gavel yeah. and Golden Gosnells over here, Shane Beaumont. The golden and, Gavel, the Golden Gosnells. And uh, <laughs> Ross Hunter, our, our ever-present panellists here to give us the wrap up of the year. Gents, mm. excited? Pump, mate. Yeah, Feeling the pressure. You're surrounded by some pretty good reps out here. Yeah, so. like yeah, no. mate, How'd you fit in an apartment? There's so many big personalities. Mate, it's, it's true. I like, it's a big lift, that's why. We've got no, them all in. There's some pretty flash cars out the front, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, a, lot mate, it's nice. a lot of personal plates. A lot of personal plates. A lot of personal plates, a lot of Porsches yeah. and BMWs yeah. and yeah. Range Rovers. And, that was yeah. just Ross rocking yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> So on the apartment, we mm. do need to say a huge thank you to Georgie Architects and Builders for allowing us to film here today. We're at 10 Bellevue in West Perth. Um, it is simply incredible, I think. Um, we've outdone ourselves, which has been mm. a, a tough ask this year. We're going to take um, a little look around this apartment, so bear with us. Well, the apartment's worth something, but that's priceless, Jess. It is. You know, how do you, that's what it's Never about, to be it? built out. Never. Isn't that what you would Never. say? Absolutely. There you Absolutely. go. I'm learning, I'm learning. And, and the encouraging thing, Shane, you spoke about the market voice. See, somebody said to me many, many years ago, if you ever want to see how um, the economy of this city is going, as you fly in, just look at the cranes on mm. the skyline. They said it's the best litmus test of how an economy is going. And we sit here looking at, what, a couple of cranes here at Elizabeth mm. Quay and there's other cranes popping up around the city. So there you go. it all bodes well. The, 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 cranes are, the cranes are rising. It's like the Transformers are rising. Just, you like that? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, I do need to say also, of course, a quick thank you to our friends at Domain who have kept everyone caffeinated this morning with mm. their beautiful coffee van out the front. Now... We are going to be looking into our crystal ball today, looking forward to 2021. Um, but first of all, I want to jump straight into our first segment, Under the Hammer. For the guys in the audience who aren't sure, Under the Hammer is basically normally Ross talking about his auction results, but it's where we kind of do a bit of a wrap up of some of the great auction mm. auction results, yeah. any results we've seen. Um, and since it's the end of the year, I want to know the best result we've seen for the year. Well, Jess, so, before we move forward into the auction results, um, you know, we... We talk about sort of, you know, have gavel, will travel, the golden hammer and all the sort of the little the anecdotes and so forth. So, Jess, I thought it was only appropriate that we end the show. Oh, yes. With, with the golden gavel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. Is what you use? Huh? Is that what you use? I have used it before. Somebody made it for me. Would you like to take Thank you so much. <laughs> you like that? I like it. I feel like it's a bit of a danger in this well, house. Well, I, I, I used to use it until one time went to sell a problem, hit my thumb, and I haven't used my it since. <laughs> I'll just put it up here. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Auction results. Just your best for the year. The best for the year would actually be an auction, oddly enough, about two weeks ago in an area that's not normally an auction area, which mm -hmm. we keep banging on in Perth. You know, people say, what's an auction property? Every property is auctionable, just not every seller necessarily is. Um, and this was a property in Inaloo, which is not an area that is traditionally auctioned. Um, and it was, it was run perfectly. And then we come the auction day, um, there's 120, maybe 130 people there, about eight, there was about 14 registered bidders, of which about eight bid, um, and got an amazing price. Um, and it just, I guess, it epitomised everything we talk about auctions, that competitive nature. Most properties we know they sell, what we say is an emotional dollar value. Mm -hmm. Where we want to take an auction to is ultimately into a bit of ego money, 
but ultimately into that fear of loss. And we saw probably about, I don't know, on this property, about $80,000. It wasn't about the value of the property anymore. It was about I have, someone has to win. It was about yeah. fear of loss, and it just drove it to that point. Beautiful. And it was just, it was just, and also the one of the reasons why I, I, I say that's the most successful option because it just sort of smashed a lot of barriers of what a lot of people think should be an auction mm-hmm. and what shouldn't be an auction. And um, yes, it's there's some property. Yeah, that's an auction probably. A lot of people said this is not. So it just uh, that's my play of the year for auctions. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Anyone out there in the audience want to share a, a fantastic result they've had recently? Or this year, their best result. I've got a couple here that from clients that have sent in. Let Steph. me say one more. People oh. are thinking. Steph, I know she's had a couple of cracking ones, but my thing I've noticed not one result in particular, but for the first time, and I've been, I know this, I've been stung here by Alana with talking about negative equity, but that was actually that seen, was me, mate. <laughs> we've actually seen property selling for more than what they did in two thousand and fourteen, mm-hmm. and that is like for some time owners didn't think they'd get back to that level mm-hmm. even though we knew we would yeah. so that's a great result but one of them i saw recently um was one in Cottesloe, which uh duet actually had the auction um and we had a west that leadable, was great. Great, great. West leadable specialist obviously in Cottesloe, great agent um and actually inquired about their property it was out of my league they're talking mid to high twos as a reserve 600 square meters uh went under the hammer at three six so that's a that is a massive massive Huge. result. Was it three six? Was it three five one? Three five one. Like that's yeah, incredible. Mm. Beautiful. So uh, yeah, some good confidence there. I've yeah. I've got a couple of results here as well that have been sent in by um, by some some of the agents around Perth. So James Thompson, who isn't with us today, but he sold um, McDonald Street Como sight unseen to a cash buyer in Sydney after three days on market for one point three four. Mm-hmm. And then um, Travis Grogan, who sells out in the kind of outer suburbs, outer southeast kind of corridor, he listed a property online at 10.30, had seven buyers through at 4.30 that same day. Um, first buyer walked in and said, I've got pre-approval for 4.30. Will they take it? And it was on the market for 3.99. So um, out in that, he sells, uh, what area is he? Armidale way. Yeah, yeah. South, southeast of Armidale. Um, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. I've got stuff all over Perth. So I get to see, people say Gosnell was doing a lot out there, but I've got literally all over Perth. So I get to see general market conditions right through. And for the first time, it's, in my opinion, a seller's, seller's market. Mm. 100%. Um, Excite- are we excited out there in the but crowd? Do you agree that's not? Everyone looks pretty pumped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steph, do you have any, any remarkable results you'd like to share with us? Yeah, look, auction I mean, has been. One job. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, um, the auctions really have come back strongly and you do need a seller who's willing to auction. The, qu- um, the issue about getting cash offers early is fantastic, but I had the one in Cottesloe in September, which I really feel started to kick off confidence with auctions and my seller was in his 80s, had owned the property for 60 years mm. and we got three offers beforehand, including a cracking offer and he kept saying, I want it to be open and fair to mm. everyone. Mm. And I think that that's one of the things that I love about auction and that I'm converting buyers mm. to understand. It's the transparency that they get when they know what yeah. other people are offering. Wow. So there's two points there that I think owners need to recognize. Price at the moment, to be honest, you're a great agent. The data means nothing at the moment. So you really need to choose the agent. And I know it sounds cliche, but the best process, best track record, the result will take care of itself because anyone can print off the same shit. But actually who's going to get the best result, who you want sitting on the other side of the table at the moment is who you need to be choosing. Mm-hmm. The, se- the second thing is when I see agents selling first day or sold in 24 hours, yes, 12 months ago, great result because it's nearly impossible. But I think you need to go back and go, well, hang on, who didn't hear about that property? So whatever process it is, and we've got all these fancy things, it needs to be get in front of as many people in the shortest amount of time to get the best result. Mm-hmm. But when I see something going the first day, uh, that concerns me, because if that day you're at school athletics carnival and you didn't see it, well, how do you know that person would have paid more? And then mm-hmm. that's the thing, what concerns me around that chain is we see it all the time. People are then crowing about it and, and advertising, you know, sold yeah, it in 24 yeah. hours. And, and I, if, I, if I was out there in the marketplace yeah. competing for a listing, I would use that as fodder to say, how do you know you've, you've yeah. A, saturated mm. the market? Is, yeah. it, is first price best price? No. Often it's not, and yeah. at the moment. Um, 12 months ago, yes. Yeah, but, but not now. It's, I'm going to hold you there. I'm going to hold you there because 12 months ago, we're going to go back. Right. We're going to go back. I think we, and we, call, can't I get think we called deep. it pretty we well a year ago, too, mate. Yeah, yeah. So 
Let's look at a year ago. If you could wipe the slate the last few years and take out the negative equity situation and mm. say, how's the current market? You'd take it every day of the week. If you took out that hangover, that negative equity, but it's just that negative equity that is holding a lot of people back. If we didn't have the, the lag of that negative equity from a few years back, it stayed like this, take the negative equity, and we've mentioned that before. And again, ask Brad, like you've seen that negative equity, the negative equity. Obviously been in a seller versus seller market for mm -hmm. some time where the sellers had to compete against themselves to capture the, the, the small buy pools being there. I think we've seen a bit of a swing. More into a bit of a, um, a buy versus buy market. A lot of them weren't ready to buy, but I haven't had that situation in a long time where they're actually doing research mode, saying, Shane, look, we're first home buyers. Can you help us speak to someone about getting set? There's a lot of doomsday sayers out mm. there, and I was saying, well, look, there's downside risk there was, mm. but I just you know don't see it going down significantly. And sure enough, though, I think those doomsday are going to be well and truly wrong. We're missing out, so we're trying to get the buyers to understand the market is not what's in the paper. Mm. It's not this Doom, doomsday yeah. market, they're still thinking there's bargains and that, that's come and gone very quickly. Right. It's panic selling and stock levels, supply and demand is what controls the industry. Mm -hmm. It's never been tighter yeah. since 2014. The Commonwealth Bank has forecast a potential 32% house price crash by 2023 if the mm -hmm. pandemic leads to prolonged downturn. Everybody's guessing because mm -hmm. the world, yeah. the world has never done. had this. 10,300 properties on the market. Yeah. That's down. When we first started doing like this show, I think it was 16, 15, 16,000. Yeah, like the doom and gloom in the media saying the market's terrible. Mm. I, I hand on heart say it's the best conditions this market has, or the market's been in since 2014. Um, people in the Eastern States just searching for um, rental properties mm. to come in. The mining companies are desperate for people. I mean, it's, it's, it's this perfect, once again, a mm. perfect storm in a good way, just building up mm. to, to really, I think, if you look at a slingshot to, mm. to launch WA, we, I, I'm confident with everything that's going on. As Shane was saying, this could well be the best market in Australia. I know someone that put a property on the market on Saturday in Wembley, mm. um, and she had 100, and, I think it was 112, 120 people yeah. through the open on Saturday. Mm. I have not had one sale mm. since the start of COVID mm. where someone's gone, I've lost my job, something's I happened, I've well. got to go. Yeah. All of it has mm. been, we actually just want to make a lifestyle change. Yeah. The press saying WA is the only, literally state, or island as we refer to ourselves, mm. um, that isn't in recession is a pretty powerful message. Bit of a wrap up of the year, guys. A little bit ahead of the curveball, would you say? Yeah, uh, so, no, I think we nailed it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> we nailed it. <laughs> I think um, we mentioned negative equity the second half of the year. But the, the, the thing, well, you did, but we cut it out. <laughs> but, but Jess, you, you talk about the market now, and a lot of people have forgotten. It's, they're saying, oh, look what's happened post COVID, if you like, but COVID's obviously long from gone. But before, you know, you think January, February this year, there was a whole heap of momentum in the market. Mm. And just when, you know, the COVID hit, obviously, you know, the walls went up and the things stopped. But that momentum was already there. Mm -hmm. And then it just sort mm -hmm. of was put on ice for a few it's months. Woke up, didn't it? Yeah, woke up, it was there. And then obviously COVID's added a little bit of extra sort of um, zhush to the whole thing. But the momentum was there. It was mm -hmm. happening. Mm. So, you know, we just sort of picked up where this I'm going to... Oh. One, one thing I'll say, I don't know, are, general, are people seeing investors come back in yet? Like when did when did they start to come in? When did you start to see them? I think they're just starting now. Just yeah. starting now, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. we started to see it turn probably three months ago and the investors weren't there. Imagine what it's going to be like when they are back. Yeah. When this, obviously the situation of the rentals is um, over. On mm. rentals, let's just have a little look at what we said about rentals. What's interesting with us is we, we're finding our top end rentals, mm. yeah. they're going twice as quick yeah, as our that's average. Brilliant. And yeah. that's amazing that for us. I've always found over my years that when the rental market takes off, you usually find mm. the sales market will get dragged yeah. along with it. So this, yeah, okay. it is a bit of a perfect storm in some ways. And rental so. vacancies, what, what did you say oh. they are now? 1.8? 1. 1.6. 1. 1. 1. 1. 6. 6. Lower since 2008. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden there's confidence mm. in that market, which is going to bring investors back to the market for the first time. They can mm. see capital growth and they can see a decent return. And that's the first market the investors head into. In reality, you need about 7,000 rental properties to be available in stock for supply to meet demand. We just went under 3,000. It means that we've still got critically low levels. So mm. I think it means price increases and, and people desperate mm. to, to get in. So on the rental market, which mm. you were just about to go into, Jamie, some, some pretty insightful comments from you on that episode. And obviously since then, we've only seen it seen yeah. it drop even further. We're currently at 0.8%. And I think mm. last time when I spoke about it, we talked about the fact that if you take out of the apartments, mm. so when you look at that 2,600 we've currently got at the moment, which again is 
about four to five thousand off equilibrium. Yeah. And I think March twenty nine is going to be the really interesting one when we're allowed to put the prices up mm-hmm. on those existing leases. So we've seen all the news articles that are saying a twenty percent jump in March. What I, what are you guys thinking out there? I do think that for some markets it'll only do 10, um, 10 to 20. And then I think you'll find your northern suburbs, your western, your coastal and your homes, 30, 40. Like I think we, in this year, we've done a a price increase on houses from 340 per week already to 390. Mm -hmm. And that's based on only properties that are being advertised. So we uh, probably will find in March you'll go a lot higher. Mm -hmm. So do you think, uh, obviously in June this year, there was about 1,500 blocks sold? Last June, there was 250, I think. Do you think when those people get into their homes, it'll change? Uh, No, if you actually look at construction figures, our construction figures will actually be less next year. A lot of people entered the market from Airbnb, so Mm. they couldn't. So they came in and filled up our stock. I do think when we're fully open, we're going to also lose more of that long-term stock back to Airbnb. So I can't see supply Mm. increasing at all over the next year. Yeah. And when do you think we'll be back to 2014 levels when it was price rental wise, do you think it will be this year? I think we'll get up there probably this year. Yeah, By wow. end of next year, we'll be there. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Not so my final question to yeah. you, because this segment is actually the real press, which is kind of where we are debunking <laughs> what's being said in the media. Um, obviously the media is kind of all about property at the moment now. Yeah. First time buyers are coming yeah. in, they're talking about rental vacancy rates, which is stuff you guys have been saying and, and the, our guests have been saying for over a year now, mm. and obviously take COVID out of that. But what's what do you see happening in the media now that's kind of at a, at a cha- difference to what you think is happening? My concern is with the media, it's always boom or bust. Mm. Um, so now they're going to say, there'll be people, remember in the rental market, you couldn't get anyone to a home open and no one, and keep in mind when they always, it's always a sort of sad story, but no one was saying, oh, how good is rental conditions as a, as a tenant? They're not going up. But now you're going to mm. start to see the sob stories, which is really sad. I'm homeless, rah, rah, rah. Now, in the meantime, you've got positions where there's all these grants coming in, um, the government uh, helping with LMI, there's all this product to get you into the market. 2% deposit, which is pretty easy these days when you think about what a bond is for a rental. Yeah. Um, and the people that didn't get into the market in many circumstances, uh, they're going to kick themselves because they just kept going, oh, rent's going down, rent's going, rent's going down. Mm. So we're going to start to see some negative press about mean landlords. But the reality is it's been very, very friendly to tenants for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. My, that's sad, but I think it's true. And once again, though, you know, Jess, we see the media, when they come out, they're reporting on data that is so obsolete mm. and irrelevant. Mm. They're making commentary around things that actually aren't on point. Mm-hmm. And that's the most frustrating that thing. Three-month lag. Yeah, least. and they need to actually sort of sort that out and, and sort of work out what's happening today because you know, as we said just earlier on the market's moving at such a voracious rate what happened two weeks ago almost becomes irrelevant mm-hmm. um and you know it, the media have got to sort of in my opinion get away from this whole thing it's a bubble mm. this is not a bubble mm. Mm. this is a correction mm. you know and i keep saying to a lot of people you know you go back to 2005 when the medium average price of a house in sydney to perth perth was five thousand dollars more mm. of a medium average in 2005 than Sydney. Yeah. You can, 15 years later, it's half. You can't have a city like Perth mm. lag at 50% to a place like Sydney. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. And there is there is that natural sort of um, catch up that, that has to happen. And, and we, we are at the, the beginning of that. And mm. if people think this is a bubble and they're holding back saying, oh, it's going to crash, yeah. it's going to come back. It's not. Mm. It's mm. not. This is this is where we're going. How I've many, got- with property management, how many people had the horror story for the person losing their jobs and what have you initially? And then got back on track. Was it general? Everyone sort of got back to normality. Did anyone have that? Is it? Is this? Are we still seeing it now? No. No, but that initial bit, bit of panic. But and nothing. yeah, nothing. Yeah. We've yeah. We've so. got some. I've got some stats here. Just to um, thanks to David James for providing these. But um, WA job vacancies are at a nine-year high with almost twenty thousand positions on offer. Mm-hmm. Properties listed for sale below 10,000 for the first time since 2006, mm. which we've spoken about, and lowest days on market also since 2006. So mm. it's all, um, you know, there's a lot. Again, it's that the, perfect the, storm. The planets are lining up. They're yeah. lining up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Are you guys excited? Finally. 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 <laughs> it's been a slog. <laughs> um, so last year, guys, I'm going to wrap this up, but last year I asked you to give, to predict. Mm-hmm the year and give it a grade out of A, B, C, D. And you both gave 2020 a B. Mm-hmm. What would you give it now looking back? 
what, real estate wise or life? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's yeah. keep life out of it. Although you're an agent, so it's kind of hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Life and yeah, life and real estate's probably well, probably about the same actually. No, I think uh, if you at the start of the year, the child got pulled into the meeting with the principal, got smacked around, pulled their head in. So start of the year, I would say it's probably a B, C, but I think A at the moment. Mm. So be cool. You can't get go up from an A. A plus. A plus. Well, it's interesting. Ducks. Interesting, you Ducks said like being class. dragged into the school, into yeah. the principal, being yeah. getting detention. You did that pretty well, mate. So that was obviously something you're familiar with. Isn't I did, it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did maths and practice. Yeah. Roscoe. Yeah, I, I, look, I know we called it a B in the <laughs> beginning. Maths and practice. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, look, it, it stayed. Obviously, we had a game in two halves of the year. The market sort of went from B to Z mm. <laughs> in that COVID period. Mm. We've come out certainly. Yeah, we're, we're an A for mm-hmm. sure. Absolutely. Beautiful. Would everyone here think? It, what do you guys think? There's a few different, but we talk about mini markets, obviously. Yeah. So lots of people working in different markets in, in well, Perth. Who, who thinks the property prices will be higher at the end of the year? Put your hand up. End of next year? This or next year, yeah. Yeah, 2021. Do you don't think? Yep. Anyone not? Who is not? Oh, that's no. good. That's positive. That's positive. <laughs> Expected price growth. Oh, Do you want to put a number digit. on it? Double digit? Double digit. Double digit. I'm saying 10% by this time, Christmas next year, it'll be another 10% from where we're at. I'm, I'm saying from where we're at today, Christmas 2022 from where we're at today, I'm going 30%. I reckon, I'll be we, I reckon we've seen 8 to 10 in the second half of this year. Finally getting Tash, some smiles. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting the list. Yeah. 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 Stop. Can't have it both ways, can we? No. There's always something <laughs> to complain about, <laughs> yeah. isn't there? Um, all right, guys, we're going to move to Under the Hood. Now, normally Under the Hood, we have a guest on the panel and Roscoe gets to ask his six questions. It's your it's your show, it's your your section. I'm yeah. taking it off you today. I know. I've worked that out. When I saw the run, Sorry, what have you done to me, mate? Sorry, mate. I know. We, but we're still going to ask our question. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. we're not going to ask 30 people that question. You can do that after the show. We will have a vote, Jess. Have a vote. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> what I do want to know... Um, from you and from maybe some people in the audience, I've got some other questions, so they're not they're not as fun as yours. Yeah. My first question for you, and Roscoe, this one's for you. Yeah. Obviously, you know we've we've talked a lot about the market, but we haven't mentioned COVID. Mm. We've been very lucky here in Perth that it hasn't, you know, hasn't affected us as badly as a lot mm. of other cities and places around Australia. Yeah. However, there were some changes earlier this year. What has been the most significant change that you've made in your business this year, Ross? Um, I think it's just been adaptable and and people sort of not being complacent about anything mm-hmm. and making sure that in yeah you know, we talk about process in in, in the in everybody talks about process beat sales beat PM I think what COVID did for us anyway is really drive home the need for to really stick on point with all your processes mm-hmm. in, in every respect yeah. okay no shortcuts I'm going to throw that one out to uh, Mr Hughes have you got you obviously run a big business. Have you got uh, any any comments on that? Any significant changes for you guys this year? Um, Other than marriage, yeah. Sean Hughes yeah. from Real Mark Coastal. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm definitely process. I think, like Ross said, um, a lot of the guys got really sharp around that. Um, certainly, being able to use DocuSign and things like that created some efficiencies for the mm-hmm. team. Um, the big thing I was saying to Ross before was a lot of the agents this year like to get away overseas and um, really recharge. And um, that didn't happen for a lot of the guys this year. And I think if they have holidays locally and they're connected to the phone, then they really don't mentally mm-hmm. recharge. Mm-hmm. A lot of my guys at the moment are heading into Christmas exhausted. And um, it's been busy on top of that. So a lot of them are doing more than they were previously. So mm-hmm. I think there's going to be a lot of tired agents next year. And I think managing energy is probably really important for us moving forward. Absolutely. I've said that. That's it. Yeah. There's not one person here. I, every time I bump every, into someone, they go, Did you look like you've had a big night? Don't you hate that one? No, you're feeling <laughs> good. Moisturizer on. Jeez, what'd you do last night? It's a better day watching Netflix. Um, all right. My, uh, my next question for you guys What are you looking most forward to in 2021? Hmm. I don't know. You're having a baby. I'm having a baby, yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Some time off then. Um, I think, look, to be honest, it's been really sad um, that you've seen so many people do the right thing, invest into property, and at the end of the day, their mates have basically pissed away all their money, gone on the cruises and what have you, have been actually better off than the person that has sacrificed and put money into into homes. And then you're going there 
and they're cutting a check for eighty to hundred thousand at settlement. It's really sad because they've done all the right things. So to actually see the people that have stayed in the market, done the right things, and if you're not in the market, you can't pick when it's going to turn. Mm. You could clearly see no one has. Well, we'll speak. Mm. We've got it almost right. Um, but I think for those people that actually get rewarded for taking a punt, especially the people that bought during COVID. Mm. Like they're going to do so well, mm. they really are. So that's I think it's good to see some reward for effort. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, Rich itself, I'd love to know what you're looking forward to in 2021. I think you work across a couple of different markets. You sell West Perth apartment market, but also a little bit in the western suburbs. So there's. Yeah, what, so what are you looking forward to next year? Next year, I'm looking forward to the improved conditions, even in the apartment space, even yeah. though mm. it's been terrible. It's been Armageddon for the last four or five years. Mm. To finally feel like we've bounced off the bottom, mm-hmm. uh, but there's still plenty of listings and plenty of work to be done, but we're not seeing huge uh, increases or forecasting any huge increases for next year. <laughs> so um, I'm just looking forward to a stable market next year. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, Next question, advice, uh, we, you just touched on this kind of, mm. advice to, to first home buyers looking to get in the market this year, guys, general public. Get your shit together. Yeah. yeah. Move. Get, get your stuff, pre-approval. Actually, a good example, Michael Fazzati. Michael, where are crazy. you, Mr. Fazzati? He actually had a, a just, situation, had multiple offers on a property recently, and I know the rental market, this has been happening for a while, where they've been writing letters saying we're a beautiful family and a couple of photos. Michael had a cracking one where... Can you explain the circumstances behind that cover note to the offer? Yeah, sure. So I had a, a house with multiple offers and uh, there was two brothers who were very, very keen to buy who decided to post a beautiful letter to the owner to attach to the actual contract itself. I had a photo of the two boys together. Um, we love your home. Please sell it to us. <laughs> it made no difference. I actually bought it, but they were actually were the best price. So that's why they bought it. But it was, uh, it was an amazing experience. We haven't actually seen that for a long, long time. So... Uh, owners are starting to wrestle control back from the buyers, that's for mm. sure. Mm. Beautiful. Any other stories like that around town? Not quite yet. It's in the next rental year. market, doesn't it? Just, Definitely in the yeah, rental yeah. market. Yeah. 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 I hope it happens more. Yeah. All right, my, my, uh, my final question for you guys today. One piece of advice for anyone thinking of selling next year. Choose the, the agent, agent over pro- process over price. Yeah. Because, uh, as I say, even the valuations at the moment, that lag, how quick it's moved. The valuations are way out at the moment. Mm-hmm. So choose the agent that you want to have the last conversation on the other side of that table at eight o'clock at night. Yeah. Not just flicking a docusign, actually sitting there and batting for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because price, to a degree, I hate to say it at the moment, some great agents here, we've all probably got it wrong this year. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you, the, the, once on that street in June, forget about it. It means nothing now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the best process will win every time. Yeah. So for, the, for the, you know, the general person who doesn't have anything to do with real estate mm-hmm. and they've done their research on RateMyAgent or on realestate.com mm-hmm. and they've looked at their numbers and in terms of a process, how does a person know? I, I think I think the answer around that, Jess, is, is making sure the agent you're talking to um, has got the courage and the conviction to, to get away from, you know, doing some sort of soft launch to try and you know, mm. harvest something out of a, a buyer pool they've got is to have the courage to say, no, we're going to the market mm. and we're going to have a process and hold the line and we're going to let people sort of, you know, compete against each other in whatever mm. uh, process you choose um, to actually get you, the seller, the best possible price. Because remember, as an industry, our our, um, our mandate is to work for the seller. Mm-hmm. And to a lot, of the, a lot of degree, I think that gets forgotten sometimes. It's mm-hmm. about getting a sale. This isn't about sale. Mm. This is now about process and having the guts to hold the line to actually achieve the best possible result because mm-hmm. we haven't seen a better situation than mm. we do at the moment for that. Anything to add from anyone out there? Nods? Just that? What do you think? There you go, I, Lindsay. I kind of agree with what I was going to say. Um, kind I, of. I agree. No, oh, it's bad. not taking the first offer. <laughs> um, I'm having a lot of examples like that where people are throwing above asking price offers before even seeing the house of the fear of missing out. Mm. I had one last week, launched it Thursday. Thursday night I had 20 grand above the asking price. I said, no, nah, mate, we were waiting for the home open and just pushing that home open. Mm. 40 groups through the home open and ended up getting 80, 90 grand above the asking price. Mm. So it's, if you can hold off, yeah. then get and, to that first and home And that's open about that courage to say, it's, mm. it's, it's everybody can say yes, 
but it's having the courage to say no. Even in that sample, it's, it's a process over a few days, but how many people would have caved in and gone, yeah, no worries, 20 correct. grand over, let's roll yeah. with it. Correct, and the seller was busting at me to get it, yeah, yeah, to yeah. take it and take it, just enough, we've got, you're running a risk. I said, no, we're not, yeah. because we've had so many inquiries, people want to come through, yeah. we can mm -hmm. just play one off the other, get it once, mm -hmm. and the fear of adding that fear of missing, missing out factor to the buyers at the home open is then starting to scare people to go, higher and then then when they miss out on it they go to the next property mm. they don't want to miss out again so they go higher mm -hmm. again yeah that's what you've been saying for mm. yeah i think also it's sad for agents just starting out but the fact you can say to an owner look guys i've got 20 30 settlements happening i'm not going to tell you to take the first offer there's some agents out there that haven't sold a property in smaller markets maybe for two or three months they get a cash offer mm. most of them on should no, no commission or no wage or what have you if there's more out there, I'm prepared to wait. I don't need this sale right now. Mm. What I need for you to feel is there's nothing left on the table. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, in times where people haven't been selling one or two a month, we all hear about that desperate sale and they got referred because they know them. Um, and sometimes the owners lose. Mm. The agent can sell it, yeah, it moves on. But, and also with that, a lot of situations we've seen now with owners is actually setting a fee, but if we get X amount, because mm. so competitive for fees at the moment because lack of stock, actually saying, look, we get this much, you're happy, we're happy, putting that incentive there. But I don't think any agent here would hand on heart say that you go harder to get a bigger price because you get a bit more. Mm. But as an owner, that's what they sometimes that's think. That's what they think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The best agents will get a good result because they'll tell 30 other people. If you do a shit job, they'll tell 150 people. Yeah, mm -hmm. true, true. All right, guys, that was excellent. Thank you very much. On to our final segment. Now this is our play of the week. This segment is normally where we the guys say something funny that's happened or something, you know, we've seen an agent on social media doing something that's a bit of fun. <laughs> so this is going to be play of the year, guys, and I'd like to hear from you what your play of the year is, anything you've muffed up, anything that are... Uh, <laughs> Anything you've seen around town? Out, outside got... of me being bagged out by Shane via Sean Hughes over an auction mm. property where I got the address wrong as I was standing out the front calling it. Well, we... <laughs> <laughs> we... But that's okay. Like, we'll sell anything, won't we? I've got that on one of your uh, blooper reels. <laughs> um, actually, I've thought about this question, Jess, and unlike me, um, mm. it's a bit more of a serious tone on this. The oh. play, it's more play of the year, and I actually think it's, it's to everybody here and, and a lot of people in the industry, is how they've, a lot of people have adapted and they've, um, they've done the right thing. And they've, like, there's a lot of people in this room that have got new business, they started new businesses really, mm -hmm. as they were, as COVID hit, which was just wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. And how a lot of those businesses ha have flourished. Yep. You know, COVID's seen two things. It's had this polarizing effect where people have either gone that way or that way. And a lot of that's got to do with mindset and people that believed in, the, not believing in the markets, believed in themselves to do the job and the best that they can do. And I think as you've seen a lot of people flourish, not only our industry, but a lot of other industries, it's because of that that person and their belief in themselves and what they do. And, and they deserve everything they're getting because, and, and I think that's the wonderful thing that COVID's done is has proven that, you know what, it, it still comes bound to the person in the mirror. Mm -hmm. That's where the first place you need to look. And Beautiful. I think a lot of people here have, and I think good on them. Well done, I'll tell guys. you one stuff up. Right? And it's, it's a property, <laughs> there's, a property that was, there's a property that will sell this year, okay? And I'll, I'll name the suburb, it's in Apple Cross. Now, I was referred into it, and I'll give you a bit of background. I was on the way there, and a taxi did a U-turn into my car. Not the car should matter too much, it was in my car. It hit your car? Hit my car, so I had to change cars, and it was the most banged up 1927 Corolla you've ever seen. So I've put up to this multi-million dollar property in this banged up car. I was at the front, had I the most amazing- I hope you didn't park in the driveway, I didn't, Well, I drove up the street. <laughs> most amazing car collection you've ever seen. So I've pulled up there, walked in, walked around home, pointed out the things, and he said, so what do you think price-wise? And I said, look, you can get around the mid fours. I think you've done really well. He goes, no, 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 the house and the land. I said, yeah, mid fours. He goes, do you know what the if and hell this build cost? And I said, about three, three, two. He goes, yep. Do you know what the build cost? About two and a half. So why the if and hell would I sell for, I said, with all due respect, that's what I think the property's gonna get in the market. It's not replacement costs. Keep in mind what I've rocked up in. And he yeah. said, you are so effing out your depth. And the property has been out on the market since 2011. It will sell this year for what I said, <laughs> guaranteed. So I can't wait to actually send him a thank you. Gary. In the Corolla. In the Corolla. <laughs> Literally like two million bucks of the car and I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll see itself. I'll mention it on our episode when it does yeah, sell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Um, all right, guys, anyone out there want to throw anyone under the bus or nominate themselves for our play of the year? Come on. <laughs> Crickets. This is your moment, guys. Crickets. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. All right. That's well, beautiful. No worries. Um, that is our show for today, guys. Thank you very, very much for joining us, for enjoying breakfast with us. Um, I do want to thank once again the team at Georgie Architects and Builders for mm. allowing us to film in this incredible apartment. If you are interested and you have a spare few mil to throw around, yeah, you right. can contact Phew. Tom House at House yeah. Business um, and he will uh, he'll have a chat to you. Um, another big thank you to Domain who organised our coffee cart out the front this morning. Um, personally, I would like to thank you too for um, an you, incredible Jess. year. You, I learned so much from you guys about the industry. Um, and we have so much fun every week. So thank you very much. Um, the crew at Crib, Chris behind our camera here. Alana at the back, mm. who just do an amazing job getting us here each Big week. thank you to Alana too, because she obviously invests a lot of time and money and resources into this. Yeah. Um, and I think for an industry giving back, um, it's nice to see. So thank you, Alana. Thank you, Alana. Um, and once more, a big thank you to all of our clients mm. in, in the room and outside of it who got us through this crazy year. And we are absolutely champing at the bit for a huge 2021. Mm. Bring it on. So, uh, Here's to a big year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry and we'll Christmas. see you all in 2021. Done. Rat. Thank you. Done. That's a wrap. Yeah.